So, since my previous video in which I took a tube apart had mild success, I decided to do more. And what better way of continuing this series than by looking at the tubes that make up a vacuum tube radio. And for that, I will be looking at the five major tubes that make up any vacuum tube radio. And to start things off, let's start with the most complicated and most detailed one. The ECH81. This is a triode heptode vacuum tube. Meaning that there are two tubes inside here. We got the triode part on the right side, responsible with the local oscillator of the radio, and then the heptode on the left side. This one is responsible for amplifying the antenna signal, combining it with the local oscillator signal and generating the intermediate frequency, which ends up being filtered by the intermediate frequency transformer. But that's a different discussion. So first thing, let's take apart this tube, see what's inside. So just like before, first step is removing the glass envelope. Well, it seems the tube is coming apart. I wanted to finish off with this piece of glass, but maybe that can wait. And if we pull it apart, we can see the ECH triode heptode tube in all its glory. Before going further in the teardown, let's just take a moment to see why this thing has so many grids? I mean, a normal triode has one grid and it's happy. Why does this thing need five? Well, if we look at the schematic diagram of this tube, we find that it has a cathode, filaments. On one side, it has one grid and the anode. So this is the anode for the triode and the grid for the triode. The cathode is common. And then on the other side, we have a bunch of grids. So we, since it's a heptode, it has seven elements. Five of these are grids, and then an anode and the cathode. So we got the anode for the heptode. The fifth grid is internally connected to the cathode. Second and fourth grid are interconnected. So these are grid two and four. We got the third grid and we got the first grid of the heptode. So again, why so many things? Well, on the triode side, the single grid is responsible for signal conditioning. On the left side in the heptode, we have the first and the third grid responsible for signal. Second and fourth are screen grids. So these grids are there to reduce internal capacitances between the various grids. And then the fifth grid is a suppressor grid. Now the job of this is to suppress any sort of electron emissions other than the ones coming from the cathode. Since the entire tube gets really really hot, you might have electron emissions from other bodies except the cathode. And this is where the suppressor grid comes into play. It will suppress any sort of emissions, only the strongest emissions, the ones coming from the cathode, will be able to go through the tube and get into the anode. Okay, let's see all these grids inside the actual tube. Now, if we look a bit at the tube, we see that we have this outer shell. And if we look on the bottom, we will see that this is connected to this circular shield inside which gets connected to the cathode and to the fifth grid. So this is the ground connection, the shield that shields this tube from any outer interference. And to take this thing off, we will simply need to unclip it here, unclip this edge, and then maybe cut a bit from the bottom, and it should come apart. Now I could use some pliers or some screwdrivers for this, but I had a very odd suggestion. A viewer called Doc Mangler said that I should use my teeth when opening the, tu the tubes. 
peculiar, but hey, we can try. So what I got here is one of my wisdom teeth, came out a few years ago, and let's see if we can somehow... No, I, I don't think this is gonna work. Oh, ah, sort of helps, but I think uh, screwdrivers will be better. But thank you for the suggestion. So let's try and open this without actually ruining the very fine internal structure of this tube. So we can see that this thing wasn't welded, it was just clipped. So just by unwrapping it, it should come apart. Slowly but surely. Trying to be really careful here since there are five grids inside there. So I don't, I don't want to ruin those. Let's see, where else is this thing connected? Seems to be here. Let's just open this up. Yeah, it's welded. So we can just remove this little piece here. Good. And a bit here. Nope, no welding there. Only on this big piece, maybe. Yeah, it seems to be welded there also. So again, let's try to cut that. There we go. Perfect. So, there's nothing much holding this together. Now if we remove the getter, then we could remove this upper isolator made out of mica and then remove the entire shield. So I will be doing that. Actually the getter is connected to this so I don't need to remove it. I can simply remove this shield. It seems to be stuck on something. I want to be as gentle as possible here. Uh, we have this part which is a bit bent out of shape. So let's see, let's try and gently. Ah, there we go. Now it shouldn't be snagging anymore. Come on. Still snagging somewhere. Why doesn't it want to come off? Well, I guess we'll have to open this in the end. Thought we might get away without this, but. We won't. Okay, there we go, and now it should finally come off. There we have it. The internal structure of the triode hepto tube. We see that here. Dropped it. We see that on the upper side we got the triode part. We have a single common cathode throughout the entire tube. We have a small anode, so this so this shiny part is the anode of the triode. The grid of it is connected to these copper pins, and it's inside in there. So you can see the small tiny wires of the triode grid. So now we can clearly see the internal structure of the heptode, so that's a triode. So on the heptode we have five grids, which we can see laid out. So we have the first grid, copper, and then the next four ones. The fourth being also connected to ground. And then this outer shield is the anode. I think we can get a much better view of the grids if we remove half of the anode. We can see that it's connected to a pin right here. But on the other side, not really connected to anything. So that's what I'll do next. I'll try to remove this half of the anode. You can see it's connected to the second and first spacer, but not to the third one. I'll just simply have to try and cut it. Cut this intermediate structure here. Gently try not to ruin the fifth grid suppressor. It's almost. Now, 
try and just gently move it. Perfect. So now we can clearly see massive, massive amount of wires that make up the internal grid structure. So all the five internal grids. And also we see in the middle with the white coating, the cathode. It's quite interesting that the cathode is common for both tubes. So there's no actual separation. It's the same aluminum pipe going through the entire tube. So common cathode for both the heptode and the triode. And basically this is the ECH81 vacuum tube. Hope you got some useful information out of this. Leave your thoughts in the comments. And see you next time. Bye bye.